Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Actually, I did see you there. What's going on? I'm Coach Brian here with Critical Bench and uh, just doing some of my reading. I, I like to stay educated here at uh, Critical Bench. Um, I've, I've just been born to study. I've been born to learn, born to, uh, what I think is to educate. And hopefully in this video, you're gonna find a little bit of educational material that you can use to apply to your own life and to your own training. So um, in this video, I'm sharing with you three supplements that work, that have been tried and tested for decades. I personally use them. These are my three go-to uh, every day. Uh, and I'll tell you more about my uh, supplement protocol each day in just a moment. A lot of my research comes from the International Society of Sports Nutrition. I'm a certified sports nutritionist through them. Uh, this is one of the most difficult certifications I've ever had to take. I think the pass rate was like two out of 10. Uh, I fortunately was one of those two that passed this exam um, back in, let me see, this would have been 2009. Um, yeah, it was not easy. I was in my master's degree at FAU studying exercise science. And I actually uh, was able to learn under Dr. Jose Antonio. He was my nutrition teacher. And this is one of the books he's written. I know he's been um, a devout, uh, nutritionist in the entire sports community, but this book is called Sports Nutrition and Performance Enhancing Supplements. So little disclaimer, the supplements I'm about to share with you um, are more for performance enhancing. They're not just supplements that uh, anybody should be taking. However, they're, they're gonna be beneficial to some people, but for the context of this video, I'm just sharing with you performance, the performance side of these supplements. So. If you flip open to this book real quick, um, if you look at the table of contents, energy system, skeletal muscle, plasticity, chapter two is protein, obviously. Chapter three is carbohydrates. Chapter four is fat. Chapter five, guess what? It's a supplement. Chapter six is a supplement. Chapter seven is all about nutrient timing. Chapter eight, body composition. Chapter nine, functional foods. Chapter 10, ergot ergogenic uh, sports supplements. So. I don't wanna go um, and just tell you the products I use. I wanna give you what the literature says. So supplement number one, let's dig in here real quick. I'll pull it out here. Oh, look at that. One of my Crunchless Core DVDs. Oh, look at that. One of my Inner Thigh Solution DVDs. Oh, look at that. Unlocker Glutes Blu-ray and DVD. In case you didn't know, we have products. Um, we sell DVDs, we sell digital downloads. We sell all types of published material that you can find on Amazon, you can find on uh, Teespring, uh, which is a t-shirt store. If you wanna buy some of our t-shirts, go to T-shirt or Teespring. Uh, even under this video, you're gonna see some, uh, some great t-shirts that we have available. I know a lot of you have been wanting to know about that t-shirt right there, and God we trust, baby. Get that, take advantage of that. All right, back to supplements. That was my little shameless plug. All right, first one. Ooh, what do we got? All right, caffeine, very simple, caffeine, love it. Take it every day, not necessarily in pill form. Uh, I'm gonna talk uh, two different types of sources of caffeine that you can uh, get your caffeine dose. But chapter six, they have an entire chapter dedicated towards caffeine. And the reason why is because caffeine is, is the number one consumed supplement in the entire world. So let's flip over to page 201. There's actually, uh, looks like 24 pages dedicated towards caffeine. So in summary, I'm just gonna go through these bullet points because the, the authors of this book says it set up perfectly. Caffeine is the most widely consumed drug in the world and is found in many foods, beverages, and over-the-counter drugs. Caffeine has been found to acutely increase metabolic rate. However, long-term studies have not seen effects on body weight. Short-term administration of caffeine affects hemodynamic variables. However, chronic ingestion of caffeine has little or no effect on heart rate or blood pressure. Caffeine impacts the central nervous system in a variety of ways, including uh, EEC spectra, sleep, reaction time, feeling of alertness, feeling of nervousness, and feeling of fatigue. Caffeine ingestion results in improved endurance performance, including exercise at 70 to 75% VO2 max for 15 to 120 minutes, time trial performance, and running cycling to exhaustion. 
Caffeine has been proposed to improve in endurance performance by increasing the secretion of beta endorphins, and these levels may lead to a decrease in the perception of pain. Caffeine has been shown to increase the number of repetitions to failure in a bench press, leg press, or leg extension, with little impact seen on muscular strength and measured by one rep max. Caffeine doses of three to six milligrams per kilogram body weight are most commonly used, and intakes above six milligrams a kilogram do not always result in improved performance. Higher doses tend to bring about side effects including anxiety, restlessness, headaches, and may impair performance. As with other drugs, there appears to be responders and non-responders to caffeine. Got that? All right, what did I just say? No, but seriously, 10 incredible bullet points of why you should be taking caffeine. Underneath this video, in the video description area, I will post uh, more specifics about how to take caffeine, uh, surrounding exercise, Per, me personally, I take caffeine in the form of two cups of coffee in the morning, and usually in the afternoon, I'll take another cup of coffee, but sometimes if I really want a good workout or if I'm going for a longer run, I'll pop some 100 milligram caffeine pills. I take two of them, uh, not surrounding any type of uh, caffeine throughout the day, uh, because 200 megs of caffeine for me is pretty pretty good. I could, I could tolerate uh, 300. I've even experimented in grad school up to a, a gram of caffeine. Did not go well. I did not like that. Um, it was just not a good day. But in grad school, you experiment a lot of things, right? Okay. So caffeine, you got to be taking it in your, in your diet. So what was the second one? Uh, chapter five. Another entire chapter dedicated towards, can you guess it? Can you guess it? All right. Creatine. Creatine, whatever you want to call it. Let's get this bad boy out here. This is what I take. Uh, we don't promote a specific brand of creatine um, or caffeine or any other type of supplements. We're, we're pretty universal, but we wanna make sure that uh, there's a few things that go into supplements that we purchase. It's got that little Informed Choice uh, logo. It's banned substance tested. It's a GMP certified or CGMP registered facility uh, made in the USA. Um, and it gives you in a list of exactly what's in, in, in the supplement. So chapter five is all about creatine, creatine, whatever. It looks like it's about 28 pages dedicated towards this. Let's go to the summary. Uh, did I pass it? Nope, okay. So here we go. In summary, creatine monohydrate, you got that. Creatine monohydrate means the most scientifically scrutinized, performance enhancing and safe dietary supplement to date. It has literally been used by scientists and athletes for the past century you got that, it's 100 years, as a means of medical intervention and athletic enhancement without the occurrence of adverse events. Although many forms of creatine are commercially available today, there is yet to be a novel form that has outperformed the monohydrate ver variety in affordability or clinical markers of performance and safety. As the science now begins to look at skeletal muscle for p the potential benefits of creatine supplementation, a positive correlation between creatine use and cognitive, or excuse me, cognition is beginning to become apparent. Though the excitement behind this compound has diminished in recent years, there are still many exciting areas yet to be fully elucidated with creatine. All right, practical applications, here we go. Get ready. Creatine is backed by over a decade of athletics Scientific research displaying measurable benefits in training and competition through improvement of acute and chronic exercise adaptations. Although its benefits remain most, most specific to the needs of the athletes partaking in intermittent high intensity exercises, athletes competing in more endurance type events may also enjoy performance improvements. High dosing regimens or loadings are now known to be unnecessary to reap the benefits of supplementation with as little as 0.3 grams of per kilogram per day kilograms of body weight per day can be used indefinitely to improve strength and lean body mass or 0.03 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for improved exercise tolerances for athletes who do not wish to experience weight gain from supplementation. At this time, the monohydrate salt remains the most effective and scientifically supported form for use in athletes and clinical populations. Cognitive benefits appear to be associated with larger doses of the compound, but more work is needed in this area, blah, 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 blah. Research, one page of research, two pages, 110 research studies on the topic of creatine. Creatine, gotta take it, I take it every day, put it in my smoothie, it's flavorless. Five grams, that's what I take. Again, underneath this video description area, I'm gonna leave, or underneath this video in the video description area, I'll give you more information on how to use creatine in your diet and how to, uh, and what to expect from it. All right, the third but not 
Definitely not least. Is there any more cool stuff in there? No, that was it. T-shirts, DVDs, you name it. Um, speaking of cool stuff, did you know we have a second channel? See that little banner right up there? Yeah, you can see that? Click it because you're gonna go to another video and it's gonna have a lot more, or not another video, it's gonna go to our second channel and you're gonna see a bunch more videos. All right, last one. Bum, bum, bum. Can you guess it? The little guy. There we go, beta alanine. Look at that, right there. All right, so we're done with the box. Let's get that out of the way. All right, beta alanine. Oof, this one's good, but essentially, when you exercise, um, high intensity exercise we're talking about right here, uh, this is why I take it, this is why it's, it's highly beneficial. Um, anaerobic glycolysis is your main or your predominant energy source during high intensity exercise. But now as you, um, throughout your exercise, as you're finishing your workout, hydrogen ions are produced as a byproduct um, or the transformation from lactic acid, going from lactic acid to lactate. And when lactate exceeds the intracellular buffering capacity, that's when you're like, I'm cramping up, the lactic acid is building up. Actually, it's the hydrogen ions that you're feeling inside your body build up, and your body is not capable of buffering that out to, um, to get you to uh, go through the exercise a little more. So essentially, beta alanine is a hydrogen ion buffer. It gets the hydrogen ions outside of the body a little better, but it also helps buffer or helps uh, with the, um, the uh, excuse me, the concentrate or the increase of concentration of carnosine. Now you can't just take carnosine because research has actually shown that attempts to increase carnosine levels in muscle cells through carnosine oral supplementation has failed. However, supplementation of beta alanine, three grams of beta alanine per day, has been shown to help delay the onset of fatigue by helping buffer those hydrogen ions. So essentially, it's, uh, it's beta alanine is indirectly helping, or directly helping carnosine, which will indirectly help delay fatigue. And of course, we wanna delay fatigue when we're training. So it just makes sense to delay fatigue, take beta alanine, and go a little longer. Now, if you, if you couple that with some cre creatine monohydrate and some caffeine, you will be unstoppable. So that's it, case closed. But this is an entire book of all sports performance and performance enhancing supplements. This is what I take. I take, you know, caffeine in the form of caffeine pills or coffee, or sometimes green tea, but not much green caffeine and green tea. Daily, a daily dose of creatine, creatine monohydrate. Daily dose of beta alanine. That's it. The winning couple. You don't need pre-workout these brands. We don't promote a specific brand. We go. I personally make my own uh, pre-workout cocktail. I get the ingredients and I make the, the, the I make my little cocktail with non no fillers it's really just flavorless chemical you know supplements powders whatever you want to call it so that's it now i know you're gonna have a question or comment but i would lo definitely love to hear your comments below let me know what you take please post your questions i know you've got questions all uh all regarding you know should i take this what about this please i welcome the comments i welcome the, the questions because i'm here to help you i didn't get those diplomas behind me for no reason just to share information. I wanna educate you and I wanna help you on your fitness journey and hopefully you're gonna make some incredible things. So that's all I've got for you on this, on this, this in this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can do it easy right here. Click our this little button here to subscribe to our channel for more great content. Here's another workout video that I know you're gonna find helpful as well. That's all I've got for you on this day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.